Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and today maybe with some last things, smaller things uh, about this, uh, the things that we are discussing, the hydroelectric station. So we, today basically we see the hydrograph. Hydrograph is what, so maybe we've talked about it somehow in the previous video uh, or a number of videos, but it is basically showing you the trend of the, the variation of the load flow. So this is showing you the load flow variation with respect to time, which means this is something analogous to the load curve that we've seen previously. So if I give the, 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 the name of hydrograph, so hydrograph is a curve that is drawn between the, the, the discharge Q versus time. So this is the discharge versus time curve. So this is showing you the variation of the flow of water. So over here on the on the X on the Y axis you have got your discharge on the X axis you have your uh, your your time. So the time may be in different units and this the units depends now. So have a look let me take an example we, we see it through an example right. So the average flow is given uh, the average flow is given for the number of months so if this is your month and this is your flow and the flow is in the units of discharge which is in q6 and q6 is what q6 is cubic feet per second q6 q6 is cubic feet per second so again volume per unit time so the month months are they've they've shown you all the months january february march april may june july august september october november and december and the discharge is given 36 23 32 36 23 32 44 48 27 46 60 42 44 18 and 21 cubic feet per second so you put them on this graph what do you get is you get your hydrograph similarly was for the load variation for a different interval of time a load demand was given you plot it on a curve and that was called the load curve hydrograph is the discharge versus the time curve so let's say this is for the month of january february march april may june july august september and just give me a second just give me a second yes so it's fine september then you have october november and this is for the month of december this is time right yes so now we do what we, we plot it we plot it so for the month of january it's 36 so let's say somewhere it's 36 well you just draw the random curve i will just draw it over here randomly this is for january this is for february this is for march this is for april this is for may this is for june this is for july this is for august september october november december for instance i just drew it randomly put down these values over here put these values over here properly so have a look again now from the hydrograph what can you see is directly from the given hydrograph what can you notice directly is two things number one would be the maximum discharge and number two would be the minimum discharge isn't it like this it is for instance over here the maximum discharge is 60 in august for example over here it's 60 in the month of august and the minimum is 23 now 18 in november 18 in november so have a look you can find out the two things directly so now these discharges are given for a particular head you have a particular head water head for instance any value you have a particular head so from there you can find what you can find the maximum energy 
depending on the maximum discharge and from here you can find the minimum energy depending on the minimum discharge yes yes so four things so you've got four things and then what can you do the area the area under the curve the area under the hydrograph would give you what would give you the volume available would give you the available volume why because discharge is the volume per unit time and have a look volume is the discharge times time so discharge versus time volume available for each and every month you can find it out 36 is discharge over here multiply the number of hours you get uh, the volume for 30 for january similarly you can find it for the whole year by adding all of them finding the entire area once volume is known once volume is known you can find out what if volume becomes known you can find out the energy units you can find out the uh, you can find out the kilowatt hours yes of course so you can find out the energy units in kilowatt hours so have a look how many things you can directly come to know from a simple graph it is as shown so depending on this curve have a look now uh, considering this data not this curve the curve is not accurate the curve is not accurate so you've got your q max over here which is 60 q minimum you've got 18 right yes so the volume for each and every month can be calculated so i will write the volume over here and how will you calculate that so volume would be q times t for example for the month of january for the month of january it would be 36 is the discharge and time is what 24 hours in a day and 31 days in january so this will give you like this right yes and then you have similarly you, you do it for for each and every month so let's say 23 is the discharge over here 24 the number of hours in one day and 28 are the number of days similarly you go on and on how do you do it uh, it is discharge versus time the time is in what units in hours units right yes sir. the time is in seconds the time is in seconds i made a mistake i multiply this with a 3600 also the time is not in hours the time is in seconds why is the time in seconds because over here have a look you are calculating it in per second so if you need foot cubes so you need to eliminate the second so you have to have the time in seconds over here if you are if you are given this unit of cubic feet per second so you've got the available volume for each and every month by doing this like this so if you do it so the volume the total volume you add all the volume so the total volume comes out to be 116381638 uh, 9440409440 cubic feet so have a look this is quite a big value so we have a unit for it and that is a bigger unit the, we call it the million cubic feet so it's basically 10 to the power 6 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 so it comes out to be 116.3 million cubic feet so million is for 10 to the power 6 million is the bigger unit right yes now you have the total volume you have the total volume so you can find the average discharge over the year you can find out the average discharge over one year and how do you do that how do you do that so you take the q average you take the total volume and you take it you take the total time in one year and this is again in seconds so the total volume is 116.3 into 10 to the power 6 and the total time in a year is what so the number of hours in a year are 8760 and then the number of seconds in each hour are 60 so 8760 multiply 60 and this i believe and now this will give you the minutes so then the minutes and then multiply 60 further so this would give you seconds i will wait for the azan so let's say this would be 116.3 into 10 to the power 6 the number of hour, seconds in a year are this much 315 315 
36.000. So the final answer is the Q average is what? 36.9 Q6. 36.9 Q6. I'll continue after the azan. Similarly, they have named another method for finding the, the average discharge. And what is that method? So I will write over here that alternatively. They have named basically another uh, 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 co coefficient or ratio, whatever it is called, the load curve by a factor FQ. So they have introduced a factor FQ, which is the average discharge to the maximum discharge. As we had in that, uh, in that what? In the load curves we had it. So FQ. FQ right so FQ so the Q average would be what it would be the volume the total volume basically divided by the total time for instance T and multiplied with Q max so have a look uh, you have uh, you you have to find your uh, Q average right so you have to find your Q average so you can find it by using these parameters first you calculate your FQ and how is that so FQ you calculate it like this I will write over here FQ is calculated as what uh, the given the volume is 116 into 10 to the power 6 divided by Q max Q max you have it over here is 60 right you have it 60 and multiplied with the total time is uh, is what uh, 8760 are the number of hours and for seconds it's 3600 so this factor FQ comes out to be 0 0.615 so if this is 615 so have a look from here you can now find out your Q average which would be uh, z uh, 0 0.615 multiplied by Q max which is 60 and this comes out to be again the same 36.9 Q6 which is cubic feet per second. Is that fine? It is. It is. So the average was unknown so for average we took the volume over the total time. Total time in seconds because we are dealing with Q6. The book has an example, they have shown a load, they have shown this hydrograph over here. Let's say we have it, example 2.13 is the name of it. The weekly discharge of a typical hydroelectric plant is as under day and discharge in Q is in meters cubes per second this time. You have to take sec uh, into account the units, okay? So you have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, yes, so Sunday and then Saturday. 500, 520, 500, 520, 800, no, sorry, 850 and then 800, 850, 800, uh, 875, 900, 875, 900, and 546. The plant has an effective head of 15 and an overall efficiency head of 15 meters and overall efficiency of 85 percent if the plant operates at a load factor of 40 percent FLD is 40 percent determine the average daily discharge number one is the average discharge daily and then the pondage required number two is the pondage or the storage required and then number three is what the installed capacity of the proposed plant so this is it right yes so from here what can you see is what can you see directly is q max and q minimum so you have a look q max is what q max is 900 which is happening on friday and similarly q minimum is what it's 500 uh, 500 500 which is happening on Sunday right yes now the average weekly discharge so you take the uh, the the what for Q average you take the sum of all which is 500 plus 520 plus 850 uh, plus 800 plus 875 plus 900 plus 546 and divide it by the number of days divide it by the number of days is 7 so your Q average would come out to be what? Q average would come out to be 713 meter cubes per second. 713 
मीटर क्यूब्स पर सेकेंड फाइन यस सर Now the average discharge is 713. So have a look on three days. The book says that Sunday, Monday, and uh, Saturday. Sunday, Monday, and Saturday, the discharge is less than the average discharge. So, so what do you do? The vol uh, the volume of water actually available on these three days. So find the volume. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Saturday. so find the volume available so the volume would be what it would be have a look the volume available for the 3 days would be 500 plus 520 plus 546 q multiply time the time in hours 24 multiply what multiply 3600 24 multiply 3600 to to make it in seconds so this comes out to be how much uh 15 so they have not simplified it anyways 1566 uh into 24 into 3600 meter cubes this is the volume available now the volume of water that is required This is the volume that is available for these three days. Now the volume of water that is required for these three days would be how much? So these would be basically these are for three days, and average is this one. So based on the average is seven hundred and thirteen uh, multiplied by twenty-four hours for seconds thirty-six hundred. So the volume required comes out to be how much? Four hundred ninety-five in the ten to the power five. 495 into 10 to the power 5 meter cubes so the pond is required uh wait 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 no 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 i made a mistake this is 2139 wait 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 this is 2139 2139 multiplied 24 multiplied 3600 meter cube so the pond is required or the storage would be what the pondage would be the volume required minus the volume available yes yes so which means 2139 minus 1566 into the same thing so the pondage required comes out to be what put down the values 495 into 10 to the power 5 meter cubes 495 into 10 to the power 5 meter cubes why did we do that because on the 3 days the discharge was less than the average discharge so the available volume was less than the volume required so to make the volume required equal to the available volume you need to have some storage and that storage is this one fine yes sir Similarly, what is the next thing? The installed capacity. So the power produced, you know, from the uh, from the relation is the power produced is eta rho q g h. Put down all the values. What do you get? Is eight nine one eight zero kilowatts. Eight nine one eight zero kilowatts. Eight nine one eight zero kilowatts. And so the installed capacity, you would say, is the output power by the load factor. The load factor is basically what. The, it's the average power to the maximum demand. So the average power I could take as the output power, right? This one, and the maximum demand I would take it equal to the installed capacity. So the installed capacity would be what? Installed capacity would be the output power, which is eight nine one eight zero divided by the load factor, which is what? Which is point four point four. So this comes out to be. 223 into 10 to the power 3 223 into 10 to the power 3 kilowatts or you could say 223 megawatts 223 megawatts is that fine it is so uh should we finish it over here or should we talk about something else so we don't have anything else basically uh but the effective head the effective head is what the effective head is that from the center of the intake to the center of the turbine 
do you want me to draw a diagram over here do i have a space over here yes i have a little space i will utilize it i will utilize it so this was the dam this is the highest level in the reservoir right yes and this is coming the water is coming and this is the tail race the, the minimum level the turbine is installed over here so the the height from the minimum level to this one this one slow down gross head is the vertical head between the maximum water level in the reservoir and the tail race so this maximum level in the reservoir and this tail race this is h naught h naught is what h naught is your gross head gross head is what it is the vertical distance between the maximum level in the reservoir and the tail race okay then what do you have uh, then you have h2 and then you have h naught so basically this is the tunnel the pen stock and this and that so maximum level and this so over here you have this one is h2 and then you have this one as h and this one as h naught so have a look h2 is basically uh, the effective head is h naught h naught minus h2 minus h1 h naught minus h2 h naught minus h2 minus h1 which is equal to h so this is known as the effective head where you do what where you neglect the where you take it till from the entry of the water into the pen stock in till the turbine till the intake of the turbine so that is called the effective head then the firm head the firm head is what it is h naught minus h2 so you uh, h naught minus h2 this is h1 okay h naught minus h2 which means the entry level of the water till the tail race it includes this thing this is called what this is called the firm head this is called the firm head uh, and i believe that should be it loss of power in the head uh, loss of the conveying system friction all the given pipe the effective head is h which is h naught minus h2 the firm head is the minimum design head the firm head is the minimum design head which is used to determine the amount of potential energy available and once determined it remains fairly constant and i believe this should be it i am a little tired i i believe i made this a little confusing i would just show this to you over here so that if you want to read it out by yourself you can read it out okay you just take a screenshot from this one and read it out for yourself because i just made it a little confusing right yes so anyways i finished this video over here and we are done with the hydroelectric power station i will see you in the next video very soon inshallah with the next topic that is the thermal power station till then take care of yourselves everyone around you do remember me in your prayers do subscribe to the channel goodbye